Good morning or afternoon or evening whenever you are watching this and today Jennifer and I are doing another video. So this one is just a conversation where we were basically going to catch up. We kind of thought maybe we would have a video. We weren't really sure. Um, and so as we got going into the conversation, I realized this would be great to again let you guys in on some of the things that we're experiencing and we're talking about. So what we do here is we really launch into some of the things that we've been feeling in the most recent weeks. And what was surprising to me is I didn't know she had been feeling the same way I have been feeling. And it's almost in direct alignment, even though we speak about it a little bit differently usually. Um, this also aligns with a lot of what I've talked about and channeled for January and the coming months. But then what we do is we take this, as we usually do, into a much um, broader conversation and, you know, about the collective journey as such, ascension and awakening. Um, so we touch on a lot of areas, but I'm just going to briefly mention a few. First of all, it's how we're experiencing the current energies and where we're at um, in this year. Because again, as I've said before, we're in a place right now in this January of 2022 where, <laughs> okay, they just gave me the visual again. We're in, we're within that phase again of the um, cocoon. We're, we're the mushy cat caterpillar getting ready to become the butterfly. But again, it's a stage. So what I've said before is we have that umbrella visual of the butterfly, okay, um, for the ascension or awakening journey. That is the caterpillar going in to the cocoon, becoming mushy, transforming, and then coming out as the butterfly. But within that larger visual or metaphor, we have a lot of those metamorphic stages. We're in one right now, big time, okay? So right now, as we've talked about, January is really a time of... Okay, they just said, <laughs> they just said a lot of you not knowing. Okay, like confused, not knowing, also physically not feeling great, um, confused each day, wondering which direction to go. And yet what you're going to notice in here, we give some, they give a lot of metaphors this time of where the collective is and where we're going. There are still some of us that are um, continuing to not have those feelings. There's a, there's a small portion of us awakening people, particularly the frontliners, or first waivers um, that are still just kind of, I'll just say, moving through the pipeline. <laughs> and you'll see, you'll understand the metaphor better as you listen to the video. So again, what I'm talking about here is where a lot of what I'll just say frontline uh, light workers are, first waivers, we're all feeling the impact in some way. Um, but what, what I've been told, okay, they just said we come in flights. Yeah, and we come in waves, flights. Okay, they're showing me geese, like a flight of geese, and then another flight of geese. But we come in stages, but we all roll through the same energies. So how this plays out for us individually is unique, but we all experience the same thing. But it might be defined a little bit differently. For example, you might not be feeling the severity of what Jennifer and I are feeling, uh, but you may down the road. But you're here, you're in it, you're feeling it. So it'll help you to kind of understand times to come as well and how you'll start to integrate these energies. But we're all here going through the same thing at a, one level or another. So, um, okay, they, so they just said the words catch up. Oh, okay, okay, look, they're just talking about the process. So we all end up playing catch up in a way to the next stage, to the next level. Because remember, as a collective, we don't all do this at once. We can't. That's too much. It's too much energy. So we roll wave upon wave upon wave. And what I'll call first wavers or frontline light workers as such are the ones paving the pathway, cutting down the jungle pathway. There are a gazillion metaphors they've given to us. Um, being the ones to slingshot out, you know, first and see what's out there and then everybody follows behind. Um, it's almost, oh gosh, they just said it's a little bit like the sacrificial lamb or the idea, okay, there's another metaphor, the idea of, um, 
Okay, they said like going into battle and they're showing shields of armor, like in the old days with knights and on horses and, you know, the staffs. Going into battle first, that front line would take those slings of arrows first. Okay, so what we're doing, okay, I guess we're going into some channeling here. What we're doing as this, this large front wave, this first front line, okay, they're talking about integrating the energy but deflecting it also for the rest of the collective. Because see, we're all one. And so what we do is we're... Okay, I just heard taking the impact. Mm -hmm. So think of it like that, all right? So we're kind of taking the impact of that, the, the first waivers, frontliners, and then the others of us, because those of you watching this video, we're all at different stages, right? So this is all applicable. But then the next wave, you're going to go through the same thing, the same journey, but what I am picking up is there's a, there's a, a benefit to the first waivers having gone first, before the rest because it uh, it paves the way. It assists in the journey. It doesn't mean you're still not gonna have your journey, you know, and have to go through all the clearing and all of that. There's a benefit though. I'll just say that energetically speaking. Okay, so enough of that so we can get into the video today. Um, some of the things we're gonna cover within what I just mentioned is the primary topic, which is kind of what's going on right now, what's happening. Um, we're going to touch on time anomalies and corrections. Um, so we're talking a lot about timelines. And we use Loki in there. Mm -hmm. So those of you who are Marvel fans, Loki shows up as a metaphor. Um, and it's actually the Loki series. Um, we're talking about creative expansion. We're talking about collective rebirthing. Um, how the oneness is actually happening. And again, we speak to convergence because that's a big theme right now. So just know that where we're at in 2022 is a time of great expansion and it is a time of great renewal and it is also a time of great alignment. Okay, we're coming into alignment, but remember, ugh, that is tough. So we're having the tough times, right? We're coming into alignment and knowing that out of that, we're going to have creative expansion, which ultimately then leads to the creation of our new earth. Now, that's a, that's a really broad view of things, but I just want you to kind of understand what this all eventually leads to. So 2022 is going to be a wild ride, is all I have to say, and is everything that I've been getting, and we're going to try to help you as much as possible along the way. So hopefully today, Jennifer's and my conversation about our own individual journeys is at least useful to you. Again, it's our own individual journeys, and then we channel information as well. So as I always say... Hopefully, you'll take one or two things away that will assist you on your journey forward. And if not, toss it aside, right? Just toss it aside. But we're here to offer to you, hopefully something resonates that will be helpful to you on your journey forward. So I'm Carolyn. I'm a channel. I'm a distance energy healer, and I'm a spiritual awakening mentor, helping you along with your spiritual awakening and ascension journey. I offer these channeled messages, often from the light keepers, who are a group of angelic beings, for your awakening and ascension journey. And then at times, Jennifer and I will get on and we'll have conversation about some of the things that are actually going on in our life so that you can see that you're not alone or that there may be some other things coming up for you to understand in your journey. Forward. So for those of you who are new to my channel, thank you so much for joining me. You can check out the description box below. If you want more free content, check out the link that takes you to a free video. It'll teach you how to create flow in your body for health and wellness, but really more importantly, it sends you to my email list where weekly on a Friday, I send out a beautiful channeled message for the light keepers that supports you in the week forward. And that'll come into your email box every Friday. So I hope you'll join me there too. I also have free content on Facebook under Purple Rain healing where I post so many of my channeled poems from the light keepers and then additionally I'm also back on Instagram posting as well so with that today I'm just going to get going you're going to listen to Jennifer and myself today and I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you at the end I don't think this is just just a you or me thing I think this is going down uh, with a lot of us even though I had this friend he was trying to be helpful but it was all it did it annoyed me and he was saying, oh, you've got to have, you know, motivation. You've got to feel excitement about something. Isn't there something you can think of? And I'm like, listen, I'm telling you right now, I'm sitting here going, what am I doing here? Yes. Like, why too. am I here? There's nothing that 
I don't feel driven, passion, motivation, um, excitement about anything. I'm just going through the motions. That is right? where I am. Exactly. And there are a very few things. I'm not even, well, there are very few things that I feel like maybe two things that I feel passionate about. I don't, I mean, that's it. Like right now. Yeah. That's it. In a way I'm not, I'm kind of like, Oh my God, there's gotta be more than this. There's got, you know, what, yes. what else, but in a way I'm realizing that it does feel, it does look to your point, what you said earlier, it felt like we moved into a space. So I'm not, I'm not totally um, super worried that it's going to go on forever in drudgery because of the very thing you said, it felt like I came out of like one, it's almost like realities or little pockets. I kind of moved into one where now nothing feels exciting. And, yes. But that doesn't mean that I necessarily, because I notice my levels of interest, passion, um, desire, even how far I like to think into something or feel into something can change in these little like holographic illusionary timeline jumping things that we do. Yeah. And I told my team this one time, like, I, what are we doing? I'm so freaking bored. I can hardly see straight. Yes. Nothing here. I don't. And they said, we don't want you to. In fact, it was kind of funny because I was so bored that I got into an old routine of shopping. Oh God. Like Amazon <laughs> buying things. So something will show up at the door. So I have something to be excited about. And they said, stop connect making connecting points we're not getting this we're dissolving this out and you keep on you keep on engaging um, and we're on almost on purpose pulling you to disengage so you don't care about anything here so you'll stop doing it and oh. here you're making mail orders that are going to cut are scheduled to come and we're trying to dissolve the damn timeline you know knock it off okay and, that- so they, they kind of had to tell me this like and i'm like oh okay so it's almost in a way on purpose. Sometimes I think too, we don't want you to feel because we don't want you to engage and we don't want you to create entanglements because we're dissolving this thing. Oh, that makes so much sense. Okay. okay. So this, what we're talking about and what we're feeling, and I always have trouble, I channel all this stuff, right. But then I have uh-huh. trouble like applying it to my daily yes. life. I mean, mm-hmm. what you would think right. I would just go, Oh, I understand now. Well, yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm like Esther Hicks, you know, poor Esther. <laughs> She channels all this stuff from Abraham and then she'll go back and talk to Abraham and go, I don't understand why. And they're like, well, we tell you this all the time, you know, right. it's the same yes. thing. It's your still, it is. like, you're still living a human life, even though you channel, but right. so I agree with you. And it ties directly to what they talked about with January, which is the visual they give is we are in this cocoon again. Okay. So like the overarching awakening ascension journey is the butterfly coming out well, the caterpillar going into the cocoon, turning on mushy and turning into the butterfly. But they said right. to me the other day, well, but the awakening journey, there's metamorphosis in various phases yes. of the journey. So you go through yes. the caterpillar stage, the mushy yeah. part a lot. And January is yes. a huge month for that because we're swirling and whirling in there. And to your point and my point, nothing, I'm bored with everything, nothing. I, I just don't know what I'm doing here. And so I mm-hmm. think to your point, you just made a really good point about dissolving those. Okay. They just said old timelines. Does that make sense? Yes. It's like, we're in these things that don't feel good. I'm not excited to go do even the most basic stuff that my entire life I enjoy doing. I don't care about it anymore. I don't want to do it. It's yeah. like, you know, somebody could come say, I bought us two tickets to go to blah, blah, blah. And in the past, I would have been like, oh my God, that's like a dream come true. Now I'd be like, meh, I don't you care. Too. You know, I, it, I can't can. get interested in something that would normally interest me, but I can feel, and I know you're sensitive like this too, and I'm getting more and more sensitive. Like I can feel these little jumps here, this little jump there. You said time warp. They've actually used those words with me. You're in a time warp. Okay. I, they've yeah. said these words to me directly. Yeah, yeah. You're in a time warp right now. And I felt like, time was standing still. Mm -hmm. And so the more sensitive your body can kind of get to feel this stuff, I can tell I am in a flat, undesirable frequency timeline that feels 
weird and funky. I don't want to go out and see people. I don't want to engage with other people. I don't even want to go outside sometimes. Oh, me too. So, so it's like, I can tell I'm there and I know this isn't the only one. I can tell it's a different one, but I, I still, it's still like, you know, I'm, I might be like you fear. If I truly have a fear of anything at the end of the day, at the you know bottom line, my only fear is being bored, frankly. Yes. Oh God, me too. And you just, you said a word that described it perfectly, flat, flat. There's Mm -hmm. no color. There's no, there's there. It's just, it's flat. That's the best word. I don't even, I'm going to keep trying to describe it. And so, okay. They, they just said, God, I just lost what they said, but they, they're talking about how, okay. They're talking about bringing, being back in the space of nothingness to yes. be able to then be brought into the space of, you're so funny, of somethingness, like the next, like, it yes. feels like a big leap is coming. Yeah. Well, I feel like somehow it shut down and I get really agitated because I like to be, I like to feel, I, you know, this about me. I me like too. to feel, I want like, one of the best thing for me is when I wake up in the morning and I get up and get out of bed, I want to feel everything I want to know. And most of it, I want to feel my team. I want to feel the beings around me. I want to feel my higher self. I want to feel this energy flowing through my body. I want to feel. When I don't, I get very irritated because I I seem like, what am I even doing here? Why are we wasting my time? What am I doing here? I hate this. Mm -hmm. I, if I'm going to do this, I want to feel this. I want to be in it. I want to, you know, so these very instants, and it's so funny. I had a two hour conversation with somebody yesterday about this very thing where they were trying so much to pull some kind of, there's gotta be something passionate. You know, and I'm like, I feel nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. I hate this. Keep talking. And so, oh, oh, but it is oh, oh, keep talking. I'm going to get a pen and paper. Okay. So it is something, there is something to the energy of it though, because I know my being the very, the very idea or fact that I'm getting irritated means that I'm still holding on to that part of who I am. I haven't changed that much, but the frequency that I'm sitting in has. So that's my only kind of saving grace, like hang in there, Jenny, you know, it's going to change, but, um, I can, I know exactly what you're feeling. I'm just like, Oh my God, I hate this. This is like drudgery. I'm bored. I don't want to be here doing this. This is so ridiculous. I want to feel something. As, they're, as you're talking, they're showing me, oh my God. Okay. I forgot about this. They talk about, they talked about in December, a wormhole that we're in from December, from the solstice through the end of January. And so now what they're showing me is you just said, pulled into, we're going to be pulled into, what'd you say? A different frequency or energy. They're showing, well, no, you didn't say that. That's what they said. Pulling through this wormhole. And it feels like we're being, okay, this sounds weird. They're showing it like us. We're stretched out through this wormhole and there's, and it's flat, but it's, we're stretched out through this time. And then, oh God, now this is that slingshot they said. Okay. So they're showing us flat through the wormhole. And then all of a sudden we get a release Yes, and we end up back over here, but there's some purpose in, this is why we're feeling this way. Okay. That's why we're feeling because we're being stretched out over time in a, this is the slingshot into the new, that new energy that then ends, that shows up. I'm going to say February timeframe through spring. Is this resonating at all? Well, you know um, what you're talking about. There's a couple of things that happened to me in the past where things were, like I told you, they said you're in a time warp. It wasn't a fun experience for me. I felt terrible. I didn't know what I was doing there or why I was there. I was interacting with a being that was kind of a jerk. Um, So I was like, okay, what am I doing here? And they said, we're making up where you're in a time warp and you're making up for lost time. And it was kind of with this being that I did not like, okay? He and I he and I did not have, I don't know what our history is together, but he and I didn't get along with butted heads big time. Um, and I found him to be like, I'd make comments about him, like, oh, really charming. He said, I wasn't trying to be charming. I said, well, then you nailed it because you're a jerk. You know, I was talking to this man. I don't even know who he is, frankly, but um, it's a non-physical being. And I was in this time warp, making up for lost times, he said, in this kind of flat feeling. And I'm realizing they're like, 
we don't want you to entangle. We don't want you to get entrenched in that energy of whatever the hell that is. We don't want you to be. So when you're there, you're kind of like your desire left you. It's like, yeah, we don't want you to look around and try to find something to keep you occupied, just to keep you interested in this place, because we don't want you to get we're trying to disentangle. Oh, yourself. you know what they're talking about? They're talking about because by doing that, we create new timelines and we're, oh, okay. yes. We're okay. energizing new like okay. synapses, new things, new branches. Yes. So and they're, they're saying, like, stop being interested. We'd in fact like for you to go into a coma right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now they're tying, they're tying on, this, right? they're, tying this to, they're tying this to COVID in the last two years. So they're saying okay. this has to do with the whole slingshot thing is yeah. we have to be, okay. They just said in stasis, or in a, to your point, like a coma, we have to be in a, um, because we are being moved through, okay, they're showing this, we're moving past timelines that we could entangle with if we yes. make certain decisions or decide we want to do a thing. Therefore, to your point, they're having to remove from us, and it's all energetic, this any desire, passion to really kind of start a lot of new things and yes. be able to have things that are, because what we'll do is we'll just create more, oh, they just said more chaos, more of the human, because they're trying to reduce that to your point, yes. trying to bring mm -hmm. us down into this place where they can take, they're saying all of us, the collective into this cause we're in the wormhole. Okay. In this cosmic wormhole, but shoot us out in the end where we all come out into a different space of, um, uh, without the, without, okay. It's like they had to, okay. They're trying to give a metaphor of, um, okay. This is the metaphor. Like if somebody's coming in to work on your electrical system in the house, they have to shut everything down. They have to you shut fry yourself or, or ruin it or yes. 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 They got to shut everything down. And so, and then they're going to reboot it later on as they work on whatever the problems were electrically in your home, but you can't have anything going on at that time. That's right. Elect does that make sense? There's probably other metaphors we could use. Yes. Oh my gosh. Is this why it's such a horrible feeling is all I have to say. It Particularly is. for those of us, I mean, some people might think, oh, I love this. This is how, you know, this is a wonderful time. Well, I'm really an action oriented person. And I was like, going to say for high energy people who like to have things, interesting things running all the time to keep them stimulated. I think it's the hardest um, like, for us. like to have, um, you know, there's some people that I know people that have vacate, like their vacations, they never go anytime between having one on the books planned, because it keeps some juices flowing about an excitement of something happening that, oh, we have that trip coming up in three months, or okay. they have the, the, it's that kind of personality type where okay. you are a doer, you're a type A, and you like to have this, the juices flowing. This is very difficult for those of us that are like that. Yes. That's why yes. we're struggling. Oh, yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know what? So. Okay. They, they're talking about, oh, this is real interesting. They're, they're using your, what you just said, and they're using a visual metaphor. You know, those huge, big plugs um, that like for something massively electrical, it's a big plug in a big socket, right? You know, like, yeah, like a 220. Yeah. The big, big, yeah. They're showing uh -huh. that with, with that kind of person. Right. And they're like, yes. mm, and when that comes out, when that gets pulled out and that electricity ends, it's just a huge unit that it impacts. Right. So there's not yes. any compared to people that may be, um, more easily, uh, able to just flow, you know what I mean? Yes. And not have to achieve. And, and yeah. so their, their plug is just, it's like a voltage thing is what they're saying to me. They're like, Carolyn, it's like voltage. How many volts you've got going to you, right? Or yes. to the thing. And then when we unplug it from those who are overachievers or whatever you want, type A's, it's a bigger impact and much more disconcerting is what they're saying. Yes. Yes. Agreed. And Agreed. Oh, they just said, you don't know which way to turn. And that's how I feel. Yes. It, it's, and it's, it's, it's a very uncomfortable feeling. I mean, like I said, I can think of a lot of things that are uncomfortable or things that I, I wouldn't want to be chronically ill. I wouldn't want to have a disability, you know, that I had to do. There's a lot of things I think, okay, would be a very, but frankly, for me, it's crazy. I know, but the ultimate would be being bored, not being able to find something that sparks my interest, that gives me some kind of um, feeling of engagement. That is actually harder for me to be in than any other energy. So yes, it's like 
I'm surrounded by, I have a car, I have accessibility to go and do whatever I want. I can't bring my, there's no motivation for me to go do oh. it. That kind of freaks me out a little bit. Me right? Too. I'm God, yeah. this is so good to talk about this because we cannot yeah. be the only ones. We cannot no, be I think we're all kind of feeling this across the board. Yeah. And I do think it's funny because my, my, they, my team used to more so now, more before than now, they're like, shut your mind off. You've got like so much stuff turning in your mind all the time. It's like, you can't hardly get in there to say anything. And at some point I felt like they pulled the plug and it pissed me off. I said, don't, don't alter my mind. I don't like that. But it shut it down almost like they pulled the plug out of my mind, being mm-hmm. able to spin and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, it did help me calm down and go in. But that was very hard for me too, for this well, very reason, what we're talking about now, but and, they almost were like, okay, she's not listening. And they just yes. clunk, pulled the plug. And my mind and, just and went, to your, point, you know? to your point about, yeah, you could maybe meditate for a minute or two, but that doesn't last very long. It's like, right. it doesn't solve the problem. It's like, yeah. I thought, oh, I'll just start really meditating again. I meditated for 15 minutes, 50 minutes yesterday. And I was like, oh, this was awesome while I was in it. I pop out. I'm the same. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I'm the same. I'm like, wait, that's not what used to happen when I would meditate. Mm-hmm. Yes, but I mean, it, it's it's making me do things too. But I, I'm 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 sitting here saying I can validate everything you're feeling and saying because I'm yes. feeling the same thing, yes. you know. Um, but it's but, it, but here's the thing: it's purposeful. It's okay. doing so- some stuff. I'm having to admit, okay, yes, there's some other stuff going on. Like when I make myself um, sink into it, feel and say, okay, even though this is going on, I still need to try to meditate and connect to my higher and connect to my expand myself. I still need to be doing, or at least attempting. I am having unique experiences that feel good. So I'm like, okay, there is, there is something here. I need to, you know, I, I try and I, when I try and I calm down and I get into it, I can feel it. And I'm feeling a lot of partnerships forming, or I don't know if they're necessarily partnerships that are new, or I'm just now at a level of flatness where I can detect them. They may have always been there and I couldn't feel them because I was so ramped all the time. Right. Well, and and now I'm feeling them and I'm like, oh my God, I have, I have this connection to this energy and I can really feel it now. Have you always been there or are you new? And okay. many of them are, I know, I've, I know I've been here the whole time, right? Well, okay. But here, okay. So this is what's interesting. The counter to that, at least for me, because mm-hmm. I'm in my head a lot. Mm-hmm. I have a tendency to get locked in my, when this kind of stuff happens, I get locked in my head. So I don't hear them. I don't mm-hmm. have that. So, because you're trying to figure out why it's happening. And so oh, you get more in your head about it. Yeah. Totally. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm trying to f- figure everything out. And so I'm trying to, which I think is a good exercise for some reason, it won't stick for me because that must show me how much I am in my head is to be able to bring my head to my heart and take the thought of the thing that I have and go, wait, okay, wait, bring it into my heart space and bring it from there. And then I literally see things differently. I connect differently, but it's Uh such a, has to be such a conscious effort for me. Yes. Yes, exactly. They did just say to me, as you're talking this is all purposeful what's happening to take us to a new plateau. Okay. So the visual they're giving us, and this is like, it's, it's a gap. It's a gap period. It's a, it's a chasm. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a nothingness period. Yes. And we haven't, I'm going to just tell you right now, I'm not getting that we've had a lot of those over the last two years. We've had the setup for it. Oh, okay. Now Mm -hmm. what they're giving me is the setup to where we're going now in 2022 was 2020 with the whole COVID start and then 2021, because we thought we were all going to be fine, right? In 2021. Well, no, yeah. it continued. So what they're showing me, sorry, I'm channeling a lot right now. 20, no, 2021 is, oh God, I have chills, was the setup. And then we had to get to this point in so that in January, now we get ripped apart this whole nothingness, flatness, everything more extreme than we've kind of ever felt as a collective, like the, the, the nothingness space to be able it's, I go back to the, the uh, metaphor of having to come in and they got to do maintenance on the entire electrical system. And so you can't move, you can't do anything. You can't, right. 
you can't function. And so they mm-hmm. basically unplugged us so yes. that they can do maintenance. I, I know this sounds nuts, but so they can do maintenance. And it's they're talking about, to your point, not, not creating new timelines, not creating new um, chaos. I keep using the word chaos in the collective because, okay, they're okay, they're talking about paving roads again. Like, you know, when you um, redo a, a road that's just a mess and then it's all nice and smooth, they're repaving the roads for us. This is really interesting. Yeah, the connections, this is right. So that when yeah. we come out, energetically from this phase, which feels like February ish she time frame out of the cosmic wormhole, we will then be able to, it's funny, they're going to say you're going to have to get your footing again, because you're not used to a, a what they call a smoother road. Now, who knows how that plays out what that looks like, right? So right. It's like, okay, now they're giving me the metaphor of like my ice skating, like when it was all choppy and people have been all over it, it's like hard to skate. And then when the Zamboni shows up, guess what? You're flying. So it's showing yes. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they said, but you'll get traction. It's a, it's all the work that was done in 2020 and 2021, taking that, creating space now for what was done then, because it made us be quiet, right? And now they're unplugging us after we've done that. And then they're going to plug us back in to move forward in 2022, because 2022 is supposed to be extremely active, right? And I don't know what that actually means. Well, energetically, everything's energy, but energetically active. So Mm -hmm. anyway, I'll- I'll I have, when you were talking, I, you know, it's funny how sometimes now uh, there's a little bit of role reversal from being- I, I, I start to get visuals now when you're talking too a lot, yeah. which is amazing. I love this. Um, but when you were talking about this, they were trying to give me the impression that you have options. So we're talking about this time period, this thing that's kind of uncomfortable or not pleasurable or interesting for us. And they showed me, drop it, let go. And then they showed me, you've got all the, you've got like nine other options that are all in technicolor, bright and beautiful sitting over here, but you're exactly what we were saying. We're in this and we're like, yuck, what is this? I don't like it. This sucks. And they're like, totally disengage yourself. You are not required to engage in this at all. It will still happen without you being focused. Take your focus out of this one. There's nine other beautiful ones still here that you can participate in right now. Let go of this one. Try to let go of your noticed annoyance and displeasure to the way this feels and turn over here. Okay. But okay. Let's talk about that. Interesting though. I don't know how to do that. (laughs) No, me either, because I'm trying to understand what you just said. So I don't know if they're, they're, I think they're trying to show me that we are, it's not necessarily doing in this one. It's almost like, don't, don't take your focus, especially for people like you and I who have tapped into other planes of existence, our team, other um, po- you know possibilities like what what maybe our hires doing on different levels. We have other things going on that are a- are active, more active than this, where we have options in that sense that we can um, focus our um, time attention into. Um, different levels of learning, different levels of consciousness, mm-hmm. different states of being. We can explore like that. We don't necessarily have to be holding on to this so hard because even if we let go of this one a little bit consciously, it's still going to be happening. And it's, we can we can redirect our energetic, try to shift our consciousness. Be a more, I'm a little more experimental in that phase maybe I want to shift to a different plane of existence and see what's going on there. Okay. So you're, you're making a point that they're saying, uh huh. Yes. So this, it's more energetic. What we're to be doing now, more, more conscious awareness of what we're to be doing now, more mm-hmm. playing with the different realities. And like you said, the meditation, all that versus those of us who think I need to be doing something different. What, it, what yeah. should I be doing? What should I be creating? Shouldn't I be building something? What's my next step? in 3d right because those of us a lot of light workers we sit here and we're like well yes we know we're bringing in the higher dimensional energies into the 3d to help assist in creating the new earth but we're doers right so we're like well then let's get going and what am i supposed to do but that's not what it is right now to your point and you know i've noticed even the harder i try 
to make myself or motivate myself, it's like the universe keeps responding and making it more repulsive. Yes. So it's like the more harder you try, the more disgusting we're going to make you, we're going to make you stop. And, you know, I, I, even, I even have to think now I was in bed for four weeks. They're like, I don't know if that was the, you know, my body stop trying to do stuff. I just heard the words decommissioned. <laughs> like for that period of time, they just said, oh, it was a decommissioning. I'm like, what? They're like, it was a decommissioning. Because See? you needed, mm. right? Oh, and they just said a reboot then. Wow. Let me tell you, I want some, some, some crazy stuff. I don't know. I'm gonna, that some of that I'm like, we don't need, even need to reboot that. We can just, right. you know. Right on out of here. Right. To that point, point, if we use this for a video, um, which it seems like we will, you've been sick for how long? How many weeks? Like severely COVID. You had COVID, right? It it was, yes. And it wasn't, you know, uh, we talked about this a little bit. I won't get into it, but it was something so much more than even what I could say is COVID. I, I think I had the most severe form of COVID there is, but it was a layered effect of every illness I've ever had in this lifetime and probably every single other just layered one on top of the other in rapid fire succession in any given moment, just over a period of time, it was the most insane thing I've ever experienced. So, um, yeah, it was, it was severe. It was severe. And there was some massive level purging going on. Um, think about that. So we think about the, you know, it's interesting too. We think about, we went through the holidays, right. And Uh typically that's full of a lot of activity. I don't, I think a lot of people were quieter this year, kind of like similar to 2020 as well, which is not what anybody would have anticipated, but I feel like they were pulled into either illnesses that required that. Cause I mean, think about the perfect. Just took them out of commission. Yeah. Took them out of commission completely. That's exactly exactly what you're saying. It's like, we're going to, we're going to stop this somehow. Now, I have, um, I look at it like, okay, there's always, there's always a couple storylines running in the background and everything's going on with me, as you know, and this one where I, I'm kind of going through a lot of it that happened to me before in reverse and the whole kind of time, this time period where we were kind of in this time warp and this was, they were even calling an energy. I was interacting with the virus. He oh. is the virus is what my team was telling me. Like, uh, what does that mean? You know, I didn't, I didn't really know, but this is that time, time warp and the virus were together years wow. ago, three years ago, about when I started hearing these two things in combination. And it feels now like that in reverse. Like I went, I'm going through the same thing in reverse that I experienced three years ago. So it is, and you said some, this was tied into COVID. They told you that this is that's very much what I'm, what I'm feeling as far as like my own personal experience. So I don't know where exactly we are, how this ties into the collective energy, how this ties into galactic cosmic ascension. I, I'm, I don't know that yet, okay. but I can tell you I've been here before. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And this is, those two things went together before. It was a time warp okay, and I'm virus at the same time. Okay, here's what I'm getting. Let's see what happens. I'm getting, this is leading us to creative expansion as a collective. Okay. Creative expansion. All right. So, okay. Bringing us to a new place in time where, okay. It feels like, (laughs) like we're going to be able to, and it feels like, um, and I'm talking collectively, like we're coming out of this, they're showing an egg, like you're coming out of an egg, but there are all these little, little uh, individuals coming out of the egg, but we come out bit by bit and into this new creative expansion of energy where, Okay, they just said we'll be ignited into the expansiveness of who we are, but it's going to be, we're going to use that expansiveness. I don't know how that's going to show up, how we're going to know that, but it feels like new opportunity will be coming our way in this era of 2022, Uh coming out of this wormhole of energy. And from there, then creative expansion in, in individuals and it, it'll look different for everybody, but we'll start. Okay. Like it's, it's, it's okay. waves also like you can't mm-hmm. have everybody going through that phase at once. Right. But it's 2022 yes. is going to offer that stage. They just said stage or platform 
for that creative expansion. I, are you getting anything else on that? Um, I do see it. No, I, I do see it in waves. Like there's, they're showing me like toddlers, infants, toddlers, and older, you know, they're, they're getting up at different stages to walk away from um, the, so I do, th- I see it showing up in different ways too, like that. Um, what did I, I just got this concept wash over me. Okay. I just got the words, new influx of ideas. I feel like there's something okay. that's going to start happening for people, certain people too, where all of a sudden there's like synapses are starting to get connected and opened up that hadn't before that okay. this resting period almost from 2020 to now is causing to gel. Is anything connecting there for you? Synap- they keep talking about synapses, new ideas, like in the brain, like things are going to be dumped in for uh, uh, creation and man- manifesting out of like something okay. that cl- didn't click before will click now. And you'll be like, oh my God, I'm going to go do this or, you know, in some way. Yeah. Like more, there's, there, there, it's an, more an expansive uh, yes. realization. Okay. Well, all okay, right. So I don't, I, I don't want to change the subject too much, but remember just the other day we were talking about uh, something that I'd, I'd realized had happened to me where there was a time, there was a form of time travel and it caused a time anomaly with my human. Yes. Um, and it, it came to my attention and I've actually been having conversations with the group and the era of where I kind of went sideways into a weird dimensional mm-hmm. transfer. Mm-hmm. Um, so while we were sitting here talking about this time warp, they kept flashing. They were kept flashing to something to do with this time anomaly. It's the a correction of a time anomaly. Uh, okay, uh, and we determined. Um, we determined that this particular thing that I figured out had happened to me. Yes, was an ano- a time anomaly based on a. Uh, attempted time travel that was a little outside the laws of maybe what should be going down right yes um and there it's almost like they showed this branch that we're bringing back in right now as a product one of the products of a time one of these weird time things that we're talking about that went down they're talking uh, because, about correcting timelines, correcting timelines. Yes, because I realized, okay, that, and I've told you this before, but it's really starting to pick up and I'm starting to see it. My multidimensional being had an experience that was somewhat of a time anomaly. And it was, I find out it was really no fault of my own. It was something a third party screwing around doing something they shouldn't do. Yep. But I have a pretty massive multidimensional collective being that was affected in its totality in that event. So now I'm finding, I told you this before, like I'm having hundreds of these non-physical or other dimensional conversations about people saying, you've been missing for years. Everything yep. changed when you disappeared. The course of everything, the course of everything switched moved you Mm -hmm. vanished like things like I just something just happened to me and it didn't just happen to like one aspect of me it happened to me as a collective group okay it was like they say they're calling it like I'm I'm the energy of home basically and I just disappeared like hundreds of thousands of you disappeared and nobody knew what happened and it changed the course of everything and it's now like that's coming back like we're discovering you almost one at a time or in chunks, even though when you originally disappeared, you disappeared as a whole like that. Yes. Okay. This, so uh, I need to give this, this metaphor because I want okay. you to, because it was earlier on, as you were starting to talk about this, they gave me the metaphor of a twisted umbilical cord. Okay. Now I've never had children, mm-hmm. so I don't, they're, they're talking about untwisting the umbilical cord. So what happens when an umbilical cord is twisted? Yeah, the untwisting the umbilical cord. I have chills. What is this telling us? Ooh. It's basically your 
the connecting, the connecting life piece the life. Of, the, of, the, of the new creation, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say, because when I think of a baby in this scenario as my, my larger being, I think I always feel like it has to do with my primary purpose for coming here. It was a collective rebirthing new earth, yeah. new paradigm, um, new baby, so to speak, that I was almost like bringing in. Okay. That's, yeah. that's how I always kind of get that general feeling about my being what I was doing. Um, and so the twisting of the umbilical cord would be, we got into some weird position where we needed to make, to, we were making adjustments now so that baby can be what it was intended to be. Yeah. And what I'm talking about too, what they're talking about is a collective, you know, the collective, yes. the twisting, untwisting of the umbilical cord. Cause I know you're a representation of what happens, right? Uh, yeah. Clearly, uh, but the twisting of the umbilical cord, it, okay. They just said it shuts off the life force. Ultimately it can, yes. right? I mean, am yes. I correct? Yes. Yes. So right. what they're doing, oh my God, this is crazy. It's like, they're kind of showing plumbing. Like they're in there, like they're trying to show the metaphor of untwisting the umbilical cord, which, oh my gosh, I have so many chills because here's what they're talking about. Oh, this is getting trippy. All these different timelines, they're actually one thing, okay? Yes. So what they they're are. saying is the untwisted umbilical cord makes it look like it's all jumbled up in different, you know, different uh, cords. It's not, it's all one. Once you untwist the umbilical cord, which also ties to convergence is what they're talking about. How we're, everything's yeah. converging back into us with our aspects, with our soul parts, with our past lives. Yes. Okay. That's the, oh, I have so many chills. That's the untwisting of the umbilical cord is so it's that oneness of who we are. And so that yeah. the life force can just flow and, and, and in the collective in the way it's meant to rather than all these jumbled up timelines which is why they're trying to show it as an umbilical cord is that that makes a lot. a lot of sense like the decommissioning the shutting down some so we can get the other the t slowing down time we're having all of this stuff happening almost like all these we're getting all, like all these moving parts to be still so we can reorganize this a little bit or something. And yes, that feels very much like that. Okay. You know what they just yeah. said? They said, do you know how hard it is to get all of you to not do stuff? And to <laughs> like, I mean, yes. <laughs> they just want to, well, I feel like there's like a, um, a lot of stuff. Like I find that so somebody's been in stasis. I'm like, how long have they been in there? You know, yes. my God. I'm like, okay, they just of me, me in stasis? And they're like, yes, there's a lot of you in stasis. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. Right. So yeah, I think of that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that going on. But yeah, to get a human oh. to hold still is not easy. I don't no. think. So what they're showing me too, God, they got a ton of metaphors. So <clears throat> they said, they just said the vast majority of the collective has to be in this space that we're talking about that we're in, mm -hmm. right? In one way or another in their journey. But they said there are some, and they're using a pipeline, okay? A, like they're using a water um, pipeline underneath the ground where, you know, for the workers to get in and work it, they got to shut off the water, right? But they can still allow some level of water to trickle through so that there's mm -hmm. still life force or still, right? Still water running right. through. And the workers are in standing in, I don't know, knee high water or whatever, but they can't let it just rush through. So they've, so they've shut that off. They've kept those of us, the vast majority of us in a stasis kind of mode where there are others still kind of moving forward. Does that make sense to you? Interesting. Like I, I feel, I feel like that water. is happening. Yes. That's, that's energetically. That is a description of a, of a sensation that I am having. Yes. Oh, so I don't know exactly why or how, or if we really need to participate in any way. Um, but yes, I can feel that going on. And a lot of this stuff, as you know, Carolyn, I feel it like, like I'm the, I have it, they're all kind of running through me, right? Yeah, I don't necessarily yeah. feel one or the other. I feel right. all of them on some level. So, um, but yes, I do feel like, and it's, it's difficult for me to feel this way, to be felt like, okay, I got my, like my super energetic, like what I'm used to being source energy flowing through me like crazy, right? Like I could light up like at any moment you get that turned down to a lower percentage. It doesn't feel good. You feel like yeah. I, 
am I dying? Okay. What's going on? Right. So you're, you know? see, right. Cause you're a representative of the collective. We know that we've talked about that before. So you feel what the collective feels yes. essentially. And mm-hmm. so, so what you're saying is that metaphor of the pipeline or of the yes. water not being able to flow and shutting down you you're you feel I'm feeling it oh yes i do very yes. much i so. think we all do to some degree mm-hmm. in how we're like feeling you know mm-hmm. don't even know what next step to take and get up in the morning mm-hmm. have no passion for kind of what you're doing for the day and mm-hmm. yeah that's right and i i think that a lot of times i i, I feel the opposite too so when things are very ramped up and the collective is on and we're getting, we're really like moving through something and we're energized. I get it like the opposite of that. I am very filled with energy. I can yes. feel everything. So yes. when it shuts down, I kind of feel like a bigger shutdown too, right? Does yeah. that make sense exactly. to you? Oh, absolutely. Yes. So yes. Um, you, you yeah, get, I can feel this now very much so. Yeah. You get a bigger kick. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But um. so, so, okay. They just said again, kind of been starting to maybe wrap this up is yeah this is all purposeful it's a reboot you know like that the, they're give, they give plenty of metaphors we we understand what those metaphors mm-hmm. are but it's really okay now they're showing reins on a horse like pulling in the reins pulling in the reins and slowing everyone down you know what we have and i think this is what they're trying to make the point of and i think we know this now that we look back past 2020 and we go wow all in, all in different ways, but look how we used to live. We're not meant to live this way. We're not meant to live in the way that we have done all the way up to 2020, this um, mass industrial complex of achieving and going for more and making the money and having, having no time to ourselves. This is all, as we well know now, this inner journey. And now because of 2020 and 2021 and the requirement of us going inward to whatever degree we each did now, we're getting ready to, to really move into this new era, but this is this, this phase right now where it's getting, um, they've come in, they, whoever you want to call the they, right. Have come right. in to now, uh, like I said, shut the water off because we've gotten to a certain point and now they've got to come in and fix things and take care yes. of the timelines and, have us be in stasis well, so that we can then launch forward into I'm getting a collective timeline. Okay. Let me, I'm just going to keep going real okay. quick. Okay. So now what they're showing is what will happen is, and it shows more crystalline. Okay. Now they're going to use the water pipeline again. Okay. So when the water starts flowing again, it's not dirty, icky water. It's water. a full crystalline pipeline of water flowing. And it's a collective timeline that we all end up being on. That is yes. okay. You know what they're showing? Oh my God. Did you watch Okay, they're showing Loki. I don't a Disney Plus yes. the Loki series. Yes. Did you see it? Yes. Oh, yes. You know how they the the they'd all go off in their different timelines and create all these massive different timelines, right? Yes. And yes, sc- kind of screw things up. Well, in this yes. case, they're kind of using the opposite metaphor in the sense that what we want, what you really want, is you want the collective to go off in the similar timeline of the collective or of growing in consciousness, right? Yes. And, and, and yet you're still gonna create your own journey, but you're going to be doing it from a state of a collective consciousness, not, not these one-offs of us going, I'm just going to go be unconscious and do my thing. It's now going to be more collective with this flow Mm -hmm. and stream of water that's going through this pipeline. And then you're bringing in the Loki series. You know what, Carolyn, Uh, this is, there's no, that is not by accident remember earlier in this conversation, I said I had an interaction with this guy that was kind of this being that was kind of, I didn't, I don't really enjoy him so much. Yeah. He has the personality of freaking Loki. That is a perfect example of who I'm talking about. Yeah. Annoying kind of a, you know what I mean? This, this, I did not, I, I did not get along well with him and I, he's still around, but we don't exchange words very much, but this is something that's interesting what you're talking about because he's still participating, Yes, but um, his general energy has changed a lot over time too. So it's almost like um, it's a, he's involved in some of the shutdown of some of the other stuff and some of the ones that we're going to go with and shut off some and, 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 um, it re-diverts power or energy to others that are more favorable. 
And he's important to that. It's, it's okay, is what I'm getting, because it, it, at first he wasn't be able to be trusted. Do you remember like Loki wasn't able to be trusted? And then he goes through this whole transformation thing of like yes. trust. He, I mean, yes. this whole trust. Oh, I have so many chills. Who knew the Loki series would show up in this? Oh, yeah. Movie? It's totally him. Totally him. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. yeah. But the, so purposeful in where we're going. Because here's the thing. Remember, we're all part of the same. We're all part of the oneness. And so, you know, it's not about kicking the, like, I don't want to explain this. Um, it's all about coming into the, every one of them coming into their own knowing. Like, look at how Loki transformed, right? Yes. He yes. transformed into a, more of a caring feeling being, I have a lot of chills, yes. to the trusting, to being a part of the, um, oh my gosh, I have chills. I, and I haven't said it yet. It's like the, the collectiveness of move, moving forward. Yes. Whoa. Yes. He came in from being a very much of a lone, a lone wolf, lone ranger, do whatever he wants, kind of not care, uh, joker, trickster kind of energy to being right down in the mud with everybody else and then having to figure this out. And he, that has, you know, even with me, some of the difficulty I've been with, he's been there and the relationship has changed over time because he didn't have it easy either. Right. No, no. So, um, and he's learned a few things about himself in the process, like how he was created, who he believed himself to be. I'm not even exactly sure who he is. Um, but you know, um, I have, a, you know, if I, if I draw some kind of recognition to his energy, his being, what dimension he resides in, who he believes himself to be, um, there is almost, there's almost a demigod feeling to him. And then there's also a, um, what is the name of that guy, the, uh, Mar Marduk, Marduk. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't He's know you're talking One of the about. sons of the Anunnaki. Okay. He's kind of that energy. I think it is. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm getting? Uh, okay. I, I know we want to probably wrap this up because it's been an hour, believe it or not. Um, but I'm, I'm getting that. Oh my gosh. This is fascinating that the, the, what we might consider the annoying energies, the annoying beings, the dark beings, they're actually, and tell me what you think of this. They're actually it's like Loki. It's like coming into the one is everything's got to come together ultimately. Yes. Right. And yes. they're coming into the, Oh, they're coming in to the collective, but they're coming in with different knowings and understanding and learning. And they're actually going to be really helpful in us moving forward. Yes. Oh my gosh. They I have a chills. ton to bring. And some of the things you see between the annoying you see these glimpses of brilliance, yeah. but you know, one thing I have noticed and as I've interacted with this particular being, I've been very annoyed with him or I've totally ignored him for months, but I've interacted with him over a period of time now where I am looking at him and I'm looking at him and I'm saying, you know, through this whole thing, as difficult it has been, his lessons, his transformation has probably been one of the most difficult watching what he, where he came from and where he is now that and some sense. of the understandings that he, the revelations he had about what happened to him, how he was created, his misunderstandings about what was going on too. And I'm looking at him now thinking he's, he's actually had one of the most turbulent um, transformations out of the whole group, right? Yep. Um, and yes, so I'm not, I'm not sure I haven't nailed him down on his energy. Um, he's the one I told you, I call him leather pants because he's always oh, right. wearing black leather pants. Right. And I don't know. I oh. don't necessarily always get a glimpse of his face, but I see him when I see him in whatever room we are interacting in mm -hmm. where he is physical to me. Yeah. Um, he's always wearing black leather pants. And so I joke and call him leather pants. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but yes, that, that is that energy, big time, that Loki energy, but he's wow. brilliant too. In a lot of ways, he's well, brilliant. He's got brilliant. stuff going on that nobody else does because nobody else thinks like that. Right. Yeah. It's he's and, unique. And see, that's the point they're making is bringing that brilliance in, but bringing it mm -hmm. in with heart and being able yes. to trust. And it's, 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 yep. I mean, who'd think we'd be using a Marvel show for <laughs> right Loki like, uh, like architects i think that you know we use them for we use it to 
recognize certain like archetypes or totally you know characters but you know he's not exactly like loki but he if if i were to say who who could i who could i name that could describe him the easiest it would be loki totally agree with you and you know as we know those I mean, most, I think, light workers that are into the Avenger movies and the Marvel, <laughs> there's purpose in all of those that were created. Yeah, there's a lot of mm-hmm. messages. But it's really interesting because they are showing the convergence of, of that, those forces, those beings coming in. And, well, you know why? What they're talking about is because the light is growing so much. And we it, remember they've talked about this, and, and maybe we'll wrap this up with this. It's magnetic, that pull of the light. It's pulling them too, right? It's like, um, yes. okay, they just mm-hmm. said it's like gravity. It's like- They're gravity. not immune to it. They're not immune no. to it either. It's happening to them too, yeah. Yes. And it's not and it's not like a smooth ride, like, oh, be- because they don't give a, you know, they, they kind of come across as they don't care about stuff that we care about, so it should be easy. There's stuff happening to them that is digging into the, what they care about too, and yes. it is transforming them as well. No yes, one's here. immune to it. Right, and they just said pulling them into their own heart, heart space. Okay, there you go. I hope that you have enjoyed this message from us today. You've taken at least one thing away, something new for you to ponder and consider in your own journey, or this just this journey in the collective. I've always said, this is a puzzle we're putting together of our own journey and the collective journey. And as you're out there learning, growing, taking pieces of things from here and there, hopefully some of these pieces will be part of the puzzle that you're putting together to understand this amazing ascension and awakening journey. So remember to check out my services, purplerainhealing.com, where I channel in all of my services, even in the spiritual awakening mentoring, where we work with you one-on-one to help you on anything that you've got going on in your journey forward, whether it's creative expansion, where, you know, I'm working with a number of people who are wanting to build and create out of what they're going through in their awakening journey. Maybe a new business, maybe a new project, anything along those lines. It's amazing what we're doing to assist people forward in that. I channel through all of those sessions. Additionally, what I do is I help you with the struggles of the awakening journey. And so check out my one-on-one mentoring if you're interested in some guidance for your ascension and awakening journey. Additionally, I have the channeled messages session, which will also provide you guidance. And then I have distance energy healing, which is a powerful way for you to have energy clearings as well as an email summary on what I have channeled for your journey. So check it out, purplerainhealing.com. And again, I thank you so much for journeying with me. And as we go through 2022, I wish you the best and I look forward to seeing you in future videos.